हंड्रेड परसेंट मार्टेन साइड सो ब्राइन इज द सोल्यूशन विथ वॉटर इज एडेड विथ सोडियम क्लोराइड देन बिलो इट ओनली वॉटर ट्वेंटी डिग्री सेल्सियस टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस थर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस वॉट एवर रूम टेम्परेचर यू हैव एंड देन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू जस्ट डिक्रीज द डिस्टॉर्शन एंड रैपिंग सो यू कैन यूज द वॉटर अप टू लिटिल हाइयर टेम्परेचर मे बी एटी डिग्री सेल्सियस सेवेंटी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस सो कूलिंग इन टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस वॉटर एंड कूलिंग इन सेवेंटी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस वॉटर बोथ विल क्यू मार्ट इन साइड but chances of cracking in 75 degree celsius water are less because more the delta t chances of cracking are more but we have limitation of water beyond 100 degree celsius you can't do it so if you want to further decrease the chances of distortion you are using oil whose temperature can be maintained at 150 160 180 and you can quench so that you can get martin set Uh, you remember martin set start transformation is usually below 200 degree celsius below 180 above it it may form bainite mixture of bainite martin set so that range of the temperature you remember around uh, 500 to 650 per light then uh, 350 to 500 or uh, 300 to 500 bainite and usually below it Below two hundred, pure Martin set is produced. Now, this Martin set which is produced is never complete transformation. Always there is some retained the austenite. Why? Look at this title: sub-zero treatment. I will take you to this title. Sub-zero means cooling below zero degree Celsius. In one hand, I am saying that. If you cool at lower and lower temperature, chances of distortion and cracking are more. But in other hand, if you go on cooling at lower and lower temperature, you will get maximum Martin set. Why? Because it depends upon M F temperature. M S temperature is Martin set start temperature, and M F temperature is Martin set finish temperature. P.S. temperature means per light start. P.F. means per light finish. P.S. when I start, P.F. when I finish. Until and unless you are still cross that F, F stands for finish temperature. You will never get hundred percent amount. So per light when I you can get hundred percent because their P.F. temperature and B.F. temperature are above. But M.F. temperature. depends upon type of steel depends upon percentage of alloying element and it is observed that mf temperature may be 5 degree celsius 0 degree celsius minus 10 minus 20 so if you cool or if you quench up to mf temperature then only you will get 100% martin set and you will not get retain loss right now what is logic so remember there are certain equipments called as gauges then bearing parts and other crucible parts if you have martin set plus retain loss tenant in it in one hand if you keep retain loss tenant as it is during the working process during the working process that retained austenite is converted into the desired phase as i have explained yesterday in the tempering so if you heat the hardened sample so around 150 to 50 retained austenite can order into low carbon martin set if you heat little at 250 to 400 or 500 retained austenite is converted into bainite and if you heat 400 to 650 Retain of light is converted into per light. Why this is happening? Because you are heating the part, and austenite is FCC. So heating, soaking, and cooling will convert austenite. Always remember, when there is a phase change, there is change in dimensions at micron level or nano level. When there is a change in phase. 
the dimensions of that component get disturbed at micron or nano level now take the example of gauges the gauge suppose this is any micro gauge or any other you have studied number of uh, in metrology subjects slip gauges and other height gauges micrometers vernier and any other types of gauges these gauges should be maintained with precision for your kind information if you visit any industry and if you see the quality control department you will find that surrounding other areas are uh, maybe hazardous environment and not very clean environment in the forging casting industries foundries but if you go to quality control department you will find it is air condition why because the gauges whatever they are using for measurement it should be maintained at controlled atmosphere to avoid the changes in the dimension to maintain the accuracy and precision if the component which you have manufactured and you have hardened it if you ensure that there will not be phase change during the working then you can use it as a precise or accurate instrument but suppose it is having 10% or 5% retained austenite and you have been made this for measuring something and in due course of time not immediately due course of time you will find that the accuracy of that instrument get changed why because retain austenite from that steel has transformed to some other phase and there will be little change in the dimensions this is for measuring instrument it will not make any uh, hazardous thing because only there may be change in the measurement but bearing you have seen the bearing component bearing there are main three parts one is outer rest another is inner rest and one balls or rollers are there so this inner rest is fixed to the shaft and then there are the balls and outer rest rest is above it so it start rotating outer rest is supported to the support in such crucial components if there will be change in dimensions during working condition there will be misalignment and if there will be misalignment there will be chances of accident so always remember the components like bearing and measuring instruments are always maintained with 100% martensite there is no any scope of written austenite there to avoid the change in the phase and these are the components of bearing require high strength high wear resistance turn the pages back and read the objective of hardening to induce high hardness and wear resistance turn the pages back and read the objective of hardening so if if you do tempering written austenite may get or may not get converted so why to take risk so initially itself 100% martensite is produced the chance then you can temper just for relieving the stresses no problem but if you carry out this treatment the danger of change in phase during working condition is neglected hence bearings and gauges are sub zero treated justify and question may be asked in the reason for two three marks or three or four marks so such components usually all i steels are there and their mf temperature is minus 10 minus 20 below 0 degree celsius that's why that hardening treatment is called as sub zero treatment very simple i hope you understood sub zero treatment is nothing but quenching below 0 degree celsius simple first sentence why to quench below 0 degree celsius in instrument measuring instrument gauges or bearing components we require 100% martensite mf 100% martensite depends upon mf temperature in few of the alloy steels or in many cases mf temperature is below zero hence we need to cool below zero 
now why next paragraph if the retain austenite is there in the components and during working condition this retain austenite will convert to the phase there will be slight change in the dimensions which will cause disturbance in case of misalignment in the bearing part and leads to oxidants hence bearing measuring instruments gauges are subjected i hope you understood right down question you right so subjective treatment is the title question is bearings or bearing components bearing components gauges comma measuring instruments are sub zero treated underline dash formation of martin site formation of martin site depends upon ms and mf temperature so if you can't remember you write long form martin site start temperature martin site finish temperature ms and mf temperature full stop 100% martin site is obtained in one stroke 100% martin site is obtained in one stroke only cooling below mf temperature only cooling below mf temperature full stop mf temperatures of alloy many alloy steels not all mf temperature of many alloy steels is below 0 degree celsius below 0 degree celsius full stop hence this treatment is called as sub zero treatment hence this treatment is called as sub zero treatment full stop measuring instruments comma gauges or bearing components should always be have or should always kept measuring instruments gauges and bearing components should be always kept at constant dimensions constant dimensions to maintain the accuracy of measurement to maintain the accuracy of measurement to maintain the accuracy of measurement and to avoid misalignment during rotation of bearing respectively because two terms are different that's why end with the word respectively Full stop. 
if such components are having retainer austenite if such components are having retain austenite comma in due course of time in due course of time it is converted into another phase converted into another phase which cause change in dimension change in dimension full stop change in dimension is not permitted for measuring instruments and bearing components full stop hence these parts are sub zero treated to obtain 100% martin set full stop it is followed by tempering for relieving the stresses now one more thing i hope if somebody may not understand i will explain it again more with some uh, detail explanation suppose this is bearing component this is final component machining etc everything is over now i am going to assemble it this component is not machined later on any of the precise cnc or machining center this part must be hardened so this part i will make hard and suppose i will not go for sub zero treatment and i will go for some effective quench check and i got 95% martensite and 5% retinoxide if i will carry out tempering without sub zero treatment if i will carry out tempering what will happen retain austenite is converted into some phase and there is change in volume change in dimension so now i said ki i am not going to machine it later this is a final component so only tempering is carried out retain austenite is converted into either low carbon martensite bainite or pearlite as i have explained yesterday and there may be change in the dimension at micron level and if you want to assemble it, it may be mismatch and there may be problem of misalignment hence it must be sub zero treated so 100% martin side and now do the tempering tempering will not lose its dimensions are you getting tempering will relieve the stresses and that's why such components measuring instruments which are finally machined and then hardened are sub zero treated remember this if even you didn't understand you can ask me later because this is very important concept sub zero treatment i hope you understand is there any doubt you can ask me now only so that i can go to next you can ask orally don't put in chat box so i hope everybody understood next important bit hardenability hr dna bi alloy ty 
hardenability please pay 100% attention very important concept without knowledge of this you can't survive in poor companies as you are in the mechanical stream suppose this is one component this component i will carry out hardening suppose it is having 50 mm diameter so i have heated soaked and quenched and it becomes hard how you are going to measure the hardness you are going to measure the hardness on the surface suppose i have measured the hardness here and it is 45 rc it is 45 rc now i will take that component and i will turn i will machine it so this is 50 mm i will make it 40 mm same component i have turned i have machine and if i measure the hardness here i found it 30 rc tell me now now it should be interactive anybody tell me why this is happening you have studied this process logically answer is expected initial diameter of rod 50 mm hardening is carried out maybe in brine or cold water i got surface hardness 45 rc and now after turning the component i have reduced the diameter to 40 mm i got the hardness 30 rc before i take your name i am expecting that somebody should reply pratik deshmukh mr pratik deshmukh are you in ha yes sir pratik please explain me hmm don't keep mum some some something you have to talk सर मी आता जॉईन झालो सर एक किलो पुढे होता हॅलो हा यू हॅव नॉट अटेंडेड माय अर्लियर क्लासेस यस सर अटेंडेड नाउ देयर इज नो रिलेशन ऑफ यू जॉइन लेट एंड आंसरिंग दिस बिकॉज़ दिस डिपेंड्स ऑन अर्लियर क्लासेस सर सर जॉइन झालो तो पण रेंज प्रॉब्लेम मुळे परत रिजॉइन झालो लगे you have to find solution to your problem go to the terrace sit there and attend the classes yes sir prajakta surve am i audible hmm Row number eight. Where are you? You don't chat. You answer my questions. Why this is happening? Hardness reduced when diameter is reduced. Means you have cut the outer surface. and you found that outer surface 50 mm diameter 45 rc and when i have machined it same component i got 30 rc hardness means outer side hardness is more and inner side hardness gone reducing simple answer i am expecting this answer from your side any smart student you can answer willingly why this is happening
ओंकार मशाल कर ओंकार फिर आ रही ओंकार This is your alertness. Where is Omkar? Neither chatting nor answering. Saurav Vadekar. Yes, sir. Saurav. Uh, I repeat question. Diameter is 50 mm. Quenched surface hardness 45 or C. Same component. I have turned and I have taken the hardness. It is 30 or C. When outer surface is removed, means bottom line. If you see the cross section here to here, this is center. So this is 50 mm diameter, and when I have turned, at this point hardness is reduced. And from here to here, hardness gone reducing. No any education is required to explain this. The earlier lecture missed it, etc., etc. Because this is metallic part. I am expecting logical answer. You have studied heat transfer. Question is why hardness is reduced from surface to center. Explain. I don't know why you are not using. You are not giving stress to your brain. Hmm. This is metallic part. Quenchant is touching to the surface. Whether quenchant is going inside, whether this is permeable, a simple answer. Quenchant is touching to outer surface, so there is direct contact of quenchant to the surface. Whereas another heat transfer from surface to center is by conduction. So effect of quenchant is only outer surface. Whereas cooling. of inner part is due to conduction so whatever quenching media you are using its effect is not reaching up to the depth and that's why hardness at surface is more and is gone reducing up to the center this is simple answer see now how i am drawing if you draw in a graph you will understand This is surface. This is center, and this is hardness. So hardness decreases from surface to center. Hardness decreases from surface to center. Why? Because quenchant is touching to surface only. Quenchant is not penetrating, not going inside the metallic part. whatever heat transfer takes place that is due to conduction of surface to center hence effect of quenchant at the outer surface is more and it is less up to center hence outer surface will be quenched fast which will give martensite and up to center it may not have 100% martensite that is the reason why hardness decreases from surface to center now same figure i will draw i reduce the size this figure surface center and hardness if i will draw actual component this is surface this is center and this is surface i hope you are getting this is your component surface center surface suppose i will plot the hardness from here itself 
then if this is the hardness value this y axis i put the component i put on the graph so hardness will be in this way surface to center it reduces but center to surface again it increases so this is graph of hardness surface to center why this is happening and if you are maintaining close hardness of surface and center you can say that you have good hardenability ability to become hard from surface to center by the time we were only talking about surface hardness now i am talking about through hardness when i say part is through hard means the difference in surface hardness and center hardness is negligible minimum it is very difficult to obtain same hardness from surface to center you have to take small pin of uh, maybe 0.1 mm diameter or are you getting because quenchen never goes inside what we have to maintain surface hardness and center hardness they should there should be minimum difference we can see that part is having good hardenability so susceptibility of material to form uniform hardness from surface to center is called as hardenability hardenability is related to depth and distribution of the hardness throughout the cross section right down i will explain more yet it is not over hardenability in first simple line you write ability to become hard thoroughly ability to become hard thoroughly next line it is defined as susceptibility yes u double s now s u s c e p t a b i l i t y it is defined as susceptibility of steel to the hardening after quenching next line make star mark it is related to depth and distribution of the hardness it is related to depth and distribution of the hardness throughout the cross section it is related to depth and distribution of the hardness throughout the cross section next line if there is minimum difference if there is minimum difference in the surface and center hardness in the surface and center hardness comma part is having good hardenability part is having good hardenability remember part having good hardness it doesn't mean it is having good hardenability when i say 
part is having good hardness i am talking only about surface hardness but when i say part is having good hardenability it means that there is minimum difference in surface hardness and center hardness so first you draw this left hand side figure only hardness surface center and then you draw right hand side see i want to explain some statement so this a curve this is b curve this also you draw and upper one this is c curve this first one is a this going down is b and this is c if you look at the figure which i have kept on hard disk plot if i say a and b have same hardness it is correct because both are starting from same surface hardness what i am saying a and b have same hardness but a and b are having different hardenability why if you check a curve difference in surface and center is less than b Center hardness of B is less than center hardness of A. Then I can say that even A and B have same hardness; they have different hardenability. Now, my statement: C is having better hardenability than A and B, but maximum hardness of C is less than A and B. If you compare C material, its surface hardness is less. C material surface hardness is less than A and B, but hardenability of C is far better than A and B because there is negligible difference in surface hardness and center hardness. Straight line is never possible. Always there is a little change in surface and center hardness. that's why i can say that c is having better hardenability than a and b right down i hope you have drawn this a b c in figure 2 in figure 2 part a and b have same surface hardness part a and b have same surface hardness but hardenability of b is more than a hardenability of b is more than a next line part c have better hardenability part c have better hardenability than a and b i hope you understood concept of hardenability next line good hardenability depends upon good hardenability depends upon 
one, two, three, you write below the sentence. First, addition of allowing elements. Addition of allowing elements. Second, austenite grain size. Austenite grain size. Third, type of quenchant. Type of quenchant. In bracket, severity of quench. Severity of quench. When you take quenchant, you take a kitty. The chop and different. It's called a severity of quench. And fourth, size of specimen. Size of specimen. I will explain this. Pay attention. So, hardenability is a measure of depth and distribution of hardness throughout the cross section. If I have taken, see, I am explaining this, this hardenability depends upon severity of quench and means what and type of material means what. I have taken a material, same, same material, and I have produced two different components, same size. So, I will give sample one and sample two name to it. Sample one, no doubt both are of same material, same size. Sample one, I will quench in quenchant one. And sample two, I will quench in quenchant two. Quenchant two is more strong, more severity. Means it can give more cooling effect. For example, quenchant two is brine, water plus NSA. And quenchant one is only water, 25 degrees Celsius. And if you check the hardness of the component from surface to center, for sample one and for sample two, you will find that sample number two gives good hardenability. Means what? If you take the cross section and measure the hardness, you will find less difference in surface hardness and center hardness. What plays role here? That is quenchant. Severity of quench was more and hence you got good hardenability. Now, different examples. Same quenchant I have taken and you have changed the size of component. Same material one sample is of 20 mm diameter and another sample is of 40 mm diameter. Material same, quenchant same. Carry out the process. Measure the hardness from surface to center. As the diameter is less, the severity may reach up to center. It may try to achieve nearly same hardness and you find negligible difference in surface and center hardness. But if you take sample 2, 40 mm diameter, heat transfer due to conduction requires more time and surface hardness and center hardness, there is a far difference. Hence, I can say that sample 1 have good hardenability by virtue of size and sample 2 have less hardenability by virtue of size. This is second experiment statement. And what is first experiment statements? What is first experiment statement? Sample one have good hardenability by virtue of quenchant. So if quenchant was good, hardenability is good. And another sample have poor hardenability by virtue of quenchant only. I hope you understand. Now, there is one concept. Thorough hardness or through hardness. When I will say part is full hard, 
one statement you remember there is never same hardness from surface to center this straight line is never permit not act possible always curvature is there you can't achieve same hardness surface to center when you are achieving it then only you can say that true hardness but you can't then now pay attention this is one diameter i have taken so quenchen quenches this component now this is center logically outer side martin side so why hardness at outer side is more because it forms martin side and from inner side perlite is produced so when you move from this point to this point amount of martin side gone decreasing and amount of perlite gone increasing i repeat statement when you move from this point to this point that is surface to center amount of martin side gone decreasing and amount of perlite gone increasing now dominating phase decides the hardness of component so if here 100 percent martin side let us assume here 90 percent martin side here 60 percent and here 50 percent and here i will draw the out inside this circle martin side amount is 30 percent 20 percent 0 percent at center so in this area perlite is dominating martin side is less and outer area martin side is dominating so i can say that this is a bar of 100 mm diameter is not thoroughly hard then up to what depth it is hard so if i measure this is 50 then it may be 40 if 100 mm diameter bar is there and if it is hardened up to 50 mm radius from all sides i can say that part is throughout hard but inside 10 mm zone is of perlite that's why i can say that part is not thoroughly hard it is hardened only up to 40 mm radius 40 mm depth why because perlite is dominating here and always it is happening you can't get 100% martin side at center then when perlite is dominating from here here is 50% perlite 50 60 70 80 90 100 100 if perlite amount decreases to 50 less than 50 sorry sorry martin side i'm saying here martin side is 50 60 70 80 100 and inside martin side is less than 50 when i say that martin side is dominating martin side is dominating above 50% amount so your aim is you should form minimum 50% martin side at center then you can say that part is thoroughly hard so if i will rearrange this figure and here is 90 60 80 again 60 80 90 100 if now you will say ki how to see martin side you have to see under microscope so if you find 50% martin side is present at center and remaining 50% phase perlite or bainite 
I can say that part is thoroughly hard. Remember this statement. I repeat, we'll stop it in one minute. When Martin side quantity is minimum 50% at the center, then we can say that part is thoroughly hard. So continuation with it, the two experiments are there theoretically, which I'm going to explain in the next class, how to measure the hardenability. Very, very important tomorrow's class. I'm going to explain how to measure the hardenability. Okay, we will stop here. Thank you.